Okay, we're up and running for the broadcast. So, uh, welcome to the advanced CAD lab. Uh, this is session one. Last week we had a uh, intro session, uh, and uh, if you would like to, you can go and watch the uh, introductory CAD labs and get familiar with, uh, with SolidWorks as a whole. But what we're going to get started with today is doing the fun, cool, advanced things. And we're going to start with simulation. And this is all going to be about uh, how much stress and load can you put on a simulated, uh, on a catted part to see when it will start to fail, when the materials will fail. Um, so what we're going to be doing today is this is uh, a prototype from 2015 uh, for our FRC, uh, FRC game. This was a hanging hook. Uh, and this hanging hook was massively over designed had, or uh, was designed for a very for a lot more load than it was ever going to receive. It has uh, two sheets of uh, 3 16 inch aluminum on either side and it's ready to rip apart the world if it wants to. So uh, this takes up a lot of extra weight. Uh, so what we can do with simulation is we can find the right balance for how much stress the product uh, is ever going to handle, make sure that it doesn't fail and make it um, as light as we can. Uh, so it's always balanced. With FRC, we're always concerned with balancing our weight. Uh, so what we're going to be doing is, if you've got SolidWorks booted up with you, we'll get started with just a new part. And we're going to recreate a, a version of this uh, within SolidWorks, and we're going to run all of our simulations on it. And we're going to find the sweet spot. Um, and uh, if, if we ever get uh, lost along the way or want to repeat something, feel free just to raise your hand up and I'm happy to come around uh, and talk about it again. Resizing your window. And very good. So we're just going to get started. Um, let's just make a sketch of something that looks like this, this uh, hook. But instead of doing arcs, let's do uh, a box. So if you can create a new sketch up here, we'll put it on the front plane. Um, and with the line tool, we're going to draw uh, draw a shape that kind of looks like this from the end. It's going to come over, it's going to come up, and a box that comes down. And it's going to look like kind of an upside down view that's just very boxy. And we'll fill in the dimensions uh, at a later point. We won't have to mention it at all. Very good. So that's a really good representation on what we're going to be looking for in uh, the geometry side. Um, so uh, let's get started with just some uh, dimensions. I've, I noticed on the way we've drawn this, you can see these relations that are popped up here. This line is vertical because this green dots are this green relation boxes here. Uh, but those two lines in the top and the left here um, should be vertical and horizontal. They're at slight angles. So if we click on these lines up here, uh, we can add a horizontal limitation on this one, so that way it's perfectly flat. And on the one on the far left uh, over here, we can add one that's vertical. Uh, and now we can start to dimension it very well. So uh, let's add a dimension. We'll make the thickness uh, of this, this piece here. Let's start with a half of an inch. Uh, and if you are in uh, SolidWorks and it has the wrong types of units, you can always come down here to this bottom right-hand corner. Uh, in this case, it says uh, custom. Uh, it might say custom for you, or, uh, but what we want to do is we want to change it to IPS, because we'll be working in inches today. Uh, it might have exited your sketch so when you change the units, so just be sure. You know, you know, you know, there. Yeah, so on the bottom right-hand corner of your screen, in this gray taskbar, if you look down here at the projection rubber, there's this section over here that might read custom. Yeah, yeah. Cool, and you can click on that and you can change it to what we want, and what we want is IPS, inch pound a second. Cool. So if we've got our units changed, it might have left the sketch and just remember to enter it in, or uh, re enter the sketch, so that way it's all um, blue and we can continue to define it. Uh, in the side, left hand side of the tree, or outside of your window, there's the tree. And you can right click on the sketch that we've already created, this line item, and it'll open up this uh, this box of widgets. And the top left most widget is the edit sketch button. And you can click that, and it'll be right into your sketch again. Okay. 
Very good. Uh, so there's our first half inch. Just for the sake of uh, ease and brevity, we'll just add uh, more half inches. So let's go ahead and smart dimension. We'll make half inch the top, uh, this top section, this top arm. We'll make that a half inch. And we're going to do half inch all around. So making this half inch over here as well. And let's say this imaginary bar that we're going to hold on to, the robot is going to have this hook. It's going to come up and it's going to hook onto the bar and then it's going to raise itself up. Um, so the bar is going to be, let's call it a two inch bar that we need to grip ourselves around. So maybe this opening on the inside, from this inside line to this inside line, maybe that wants to be uh, three inches. Give ourselves an inch of slot around the two inch bar half inch on either side just to make it nice and easy to grab. Um, and then the <clears throat> maybe this dimension over here, this height of the hook um, needs to be uh, at least uh, two and a half inches. So let's just pop two and a half. Cool. There we go. So now it'll be fully enclosed. Uh, and we can see here that our uh, oh, the last thing that we need to do is just add a dimension that is from this bottom most piece to the top, uh, to the top. So that way we get a length on the tail here, or the length of this line. And I think five inches is a good number for that. And if we have all of our numbers the same, we'll have the same exact experience. So if you would like to follow along precisely, then uh, that would be great. Um, and then just for, we need to locate it in space against this origin. Right now, it's not located in space at all, and so it's still blue and it can move around. Um, so, just for the sake of ease and brevity, let's grab this bottom left hand point, or bottom right hand point, and click and drag the point onto the origin. And if we click and drag it up there, it'll snap to it and let go, and everything should be fully defined now. Everything should be black. Um, so, we have those dimensions up there on the screen if there's anything else that we want to add. Very good. Looks like we're all following along beautifully. Let's keep going then. Um, now let's extrude it. So we're going to extrude this just as it is. So head into your Features tab and hit that Extrude Boss Base. The Features tab is in the Command Manager. Um, and now we get to choose how thick this material is going to be. Um, let's do something like an eighth of an inch to start. So an eighth of an inch is 0.125, or you can type in one slash eight, one divided by eight, and SolidWorks will do the computation for you. But for some of those uh, easy fractions, it's nice to have them on deck. So 0.125 inches. Um, and as soon as we have that, we'll just hit the extrude button. And look at that. We've got ourselves a nice hook. Uh, it might be able to hold a small robot. Uh, but how about a 150 pound robot? We're getting some shaky heads from the audience. Um, oh, you make it out of the right material. Oh, I like this guy. It's exactly where I was going with it. Right now, our material is not specified. There's in this tree area, there is a material section, uh, and so there, your part is made out of this gray matter material that really has no properties. It has like standard properties of some random. Uh, nobody knows what it is. But what we can do is we can uh, change the material to be anything. Uh, from many different alloys of steels uh, to aluminum to glass, if you wanted to, uh, or air or water. You can CAD it in water if you want to. So, uh, in the case you ever want to. Uh, so, right click on this material section and hit, uh, if, uh, there's this drop down menu here. This has a lot of uh, favorited materials. There are some default things that you can uh, put in there and you can customize it. But in the case that something isn't what you want in there, hit this Edit Material button, uh, the first line item. And that will bring up this fantastic dialog box. Um, so before I go too far, I just kind of want to repeat how we got here. Uh, in this left-hand side of the tree, there's this material section uh, that's right underneath. Uh, it's one of the first line items. And you can right-click on it, uh, and it'll open. Then uh, you can choose Edit Material, and that will open up this magical window. This window has a whole bunch of pre-programmed uh, materials. Uh, so the lovely people at SolidWorks have keyed in a whole bunch of material properties uh, from the elastic modulus 
to a whole bunch of different things that uh, only material science people really understand. Um, but the, the result that we get to have is we can choose our line item and uh, perhaps for a standard aluminum alloy that we use a lot first, it's just a 60-61 alloy. Um, the alloys are just uh, just a really brief material thing. Um, when you have aluminum, you, when you buy aluminum from the hardware store or, uh, or your metal shop, uh, it often is, or most certainly, is not raw aluminum, pure aluminum. It's actually a mixture, a composition of a whole bunch of different metals uh, to give it uh, properties of other metals. And you're essentially um, adding the strengths of a whole bunch of different metals into, uh, into one. And so all these numbers, um, the 6061, uh, and uh, 6063, those are just representations, kind of like formulas for uh, figuring out exactly the right composition. So that's just uh, why there are a whole bunch of different versions of aluminum. Um, don't really need to worry about that too much. All you just need to know is we're gonna use the 6061 alloy today. Um, so we can hit the, select it in the tree, uh, or not the tree, in the sidebar, and we can just hit this apply button. And uh, what you'll notice is that all these fantastic properties have been applied to your actual part. And you can close out of this window now because we're all done with it. We've chosen the material we want. Um, and your, um, your part has shifted colors a little bit. It's a little bit yellower now, um, a little lighter and a little bit yellower to kind of simulate the aluminum's gloss and sheen. Um, and it has with it all the properties that we're gonna need to use for simulation. Um, what it also does is it calculates the exact weight of it too. Uh, and uh, we'll get to that in a little bit. A little bit. Actually, yeah, let's just show you guys that right now. Under this evaluate tab, if we want to know how heavy this, this is now that it's aluminum, uh, you can jump into evaluate and you can hit this mass properties section over here, right beside measure. And that's super handy uh, because then it'll spit out, it'll calculate exactly uh, how heavy your part is going to be. The mass is, and this one is going to be 0 0.06 pounds. Uh, and this is a really great way to estimate how much your robot might weigh in CAD. Um, but don't trust that number too much because when you add hardware and electronics and everything and plastic bits you completely forgot about, it often uh, gets quite a bit heavier than what it is in CAD. Um, but the great thing is that it has the strengths properties attached to this part now. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we're actually going to dive right into the simulation component. So in the evaluate tab, on the far right hand side, well not far right hand side, there's the simulation uh, express analysis wizard. It's kind of on the bare right of center, uh, simulation express analysis wizard. Let's go ahead and click that. Um, can I be used when SolidWorks is Let's check. What was that? I can read it all. Okay, we're getting some uh, funky error where it says that SolidWorks simulation is an add-in that's checked. Uh, what we just need, to, what this is saying is that it loaded a previous simulation package and it just uh, needs that it to be unchecked. Yeah, um, if you just go to your SolidWorks add-ins tab, you can access the add-ins uh, right over here to the one to the right. It's somewhere up there that you can access your add-ins. There you go, add-ins. So that was this options yep. button, and then we selected add-ins, and SolidWorks simulation is checked here. And if you uncheck uh, uncheck this active add-ins box uh, right beside it, hit OK, then we'll be should be all set to run this express wizard. So we'll try that again, and there it is. Where's very good? Yeah, yeah I think they come up a little here. Right, so if you're, are you looking for the add-ins? So, yeah, up here, Robert, if you take a look on the screen. Yeah, so it's this drop-down arrow next to the options that looks like a white piece of paper with a green check mark, and uh, on the very, very top bar to the left of your part name. Um, and you can then find SolidWorks simulation. If, that, if that's an error that was presented to you, this is how you find the solution for it. And you can uncheck it, hit apply, and you'll be able to enter the Simulation Express analysis which that is a mouthful, but let's get started. So it gives you a nice welcome message here. You can read all about it, um, but we're just gonna go in and dive in. So hit this next button uh, on this right-hand side. 
Uh, and you'll see up here in this top section, it gives you an overview of everything that we're going to be doing uh, to, uh, to work on this part. Uh, so what we're, the first step is going to be adding fixtures and loads, specifying the material, um, and then we'll run the simulations. Those are the three things that we need to do. We already did the material because that's a really good intro to this. And fixtures. Uh, what is a fixture? A fixture is um, what part or what section of your part is going to be rigidly attached? What's not going to move? Um, you know, is there going to be, uh, is it going to be welded into place? Is it going to be bolted into place? So those, is that um, fastener going to be somewhere down here? Um, and this matters because when we add, uh, when we run the simulation, it needs to have, um, uh, it needs to have, th those forces need to be balanced by some, uh, by some fixed point. And so we need to tell SolidWorks what is going to be a fixed point on this part. Um, so let's go ahead and add a couple of fixtures. So we're already ready to start adding fixtures, and there is this nice Add Fixtures button uh, right down here. And this gives you a really nice uh, graphic representation of how this green face is fixed, and this one's being loaded. You can see it's bending up over here where it's being loaded, but over here in the fixed place, it's just stuck in space because it is permanently carbon. So now we're, we have a window open where we can start selecting what we want to fix. Um, and in this part, uh, we're going to say that it is um, attached only if you can rotate so we can look up the bottom of the part. Um, it's only going to be attached down here at this, uh, at this face, this very bottommost face. We're going to say that's where it's fixed, and that's the only location that it's fixed. Um, you can only, in this, in this express wizard, you can only select faces. Um, and uh, these pins that are put in here is simulating that this is, these are all fixed locations. So that entire face will not, will not flex, will not change as we load it with, uh, with, with forces. Um, in this example, this is going to be the entire, um, this is going to be all that we're going to add for fixtures. To get a more accurate simulation, uh, you could add uh, holes, bolt holes of where you're going to, you know, place those bolts, and you can fix those holes, and you can really get a sense of um, exactly how the forces are going to run. But since we're going to do a quick demo, we're just going to hit that bottom one. Um, so we are all set with this. Hit the green check bar, check box in the left. So we've added the fixture, and um, you'll notice over here that it's added a secondary tree. This is your regular part tree for creating it. Uh, and then down here, this is your simulation tree. This is everything that you've added to create the simulation you're at. Um, so and hopefully we should see this fixed item. Um, so I'm just going to pause here. Are there, can I breeze over anything too quickly? Is there any questions at all? Um, we are all, we're all set with that. Very cool. Uh, that was a lot of stuff. So feel free to stop me. Um, so that's, steps, that's step one complete. The next thing it needs to know is uh, the loads. So go ahead and hit the next button or click loads, uh, step two. We're almost done. This is uh, two out of three items. Uh, we've done the material in the picture so far. So loads is all about uh, how, where is the force uh, going to be experienced on the part. Um, and if we're hanging like this, where is the force going to be applied? Sorry. In the inside of the leg. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So in this case, we can just like how we select the picture, we can only select faces. So it will be this undermost face that's flat. Uh, we can imagine the the bar coming up here, like my fist. Or my fist was a bar. Uh, it would be coming up and it would hit this face here. Uh, and for the most part, at, uh, in this sample simulation. It, it's going to apply an even load all the way across the space. Um, you can tune these things in more if you want a more accurate simulation. Uh, in reality, it won't be as much of an even load. Uh, but let's get to this. So we're going to add a force. You can add a force and you can add a pressure, uh, depending on the simulation that you're working on. But we're going to add a force in this case. And so we have a very similar dialog box as when we added the fixture. It's asking us where is the force applied, uh, and that's the first thing that's asking us. So, 
uh, these purple arrows simulate the horse, and we're going to click on that one face in the bottom. So you can see here, this is where it's going to be fixed, and then we're going to be putting a lot of force here. The second thing that we need to add for our force is exactly the magnitude of the force. How much is it going to be? Uh, how strong is it? Would it be pl applying any force on the other inside faces? Because it might not sit perfectly square. Right. In this case, right now, it will not be applying any force directly to the inside faces. Um, if, it, if your hook um, wasn't lining up perfectly, like the, if, it came, if it came straight down, this would be a semi-accurate simulation. If it ended up, you know, coming at a slight angle, like, or a 45 degree angle, and the force was distributed between, you know, like sharply in this corner or something, we would modify the part um, so that it would have a couple of bases here, very small bases here that we could select and we could say add forces here and here. Uh, and we could simulate uh, forces um, coming at an angle. Um, does that kind of make sense? Yeah. Is that kind of what you do if you wanted to have just um, you know, a, a single force, like this is going to go over a round um, chin up bar. So the force is actually going to be applied instead of distributed, it's going to be applied at a point. Right. Is that what we do is we, we define some more faces? And yeah, what I have done for working around SolidWorks, there may, I haven't found a more elegant solution than doing what you suggested of adding another uh, extrusion a very, very minimal extrusion, like adding um, a fraction of an inch, like drawing a box here and then extruding that a fraction of an inch, just so that it doesn't add you know, much structural rigidity at all. It just gives SolidWorks, SolidWorks a face that it can select and say, this is the concentration of the force that we're gonna be applying. It joins the body of the entire part, but instead of applying forces at the corners as well, uh, we just create a new face, create a new extrusion uh, with the base that comes with it and apply the force right there. Um, in this case, we're just applying it to the in entire side length, but um, we'll, uh, I think a good thing will be that we'll, we'll do that as the next step um, or in a, in a couple of steps. But we could also add a second force here as well if we want. It could be a second, lesser force. That's correct, yeah. Um, uh, Finishing up this force, we need to add a magnitude. Uh, how heavy is this force going to be? If you're thinking in, uh, um, if you're a metric thinker, you can provide it in newtons. If you're an English think thinker and you know how much a pound feels like in your hand, you can hit this drop down arrow and you can hit, it can choose between the English system and the uh, scientific system, so SI or English. Um, I think in pounds, I can't visualize what a newton feels like. Uh, it's about the weight of one apple, is what I know. Um, but uh, a typical robot is going to be 120 pounds is the weight limit. We also have to, or for FRC, uh, and we also have to add in a battery and bumper weight uh, on top of that. Um, so turns out to be, uh, I think, a good number estimation that we like to use on Rat Pack is 140 or 150 pounds, somewhere in that range, uh, assuming our robot itself is 120 pounds. Um, but of course, you can tune that to, be, to whatever your final weight comes out to be, so you can maximize, um, maximize your simulation capabilities. Um, and with this, it's also kind of good to know that you can reverse the direction of your force. This checkbox is really handy down here, where instead of pushing on it, it could be pulling on it too, uh, depending on uh, the application. You can kind of tune your force to fit the application. Um, but with this, I think this is a really good good start. So let's go ahead and add that force. And you'll see over here in the left hand side of the tree, we have uh, one fixture, fixed one, and one force, force one. Uh, with that, we have items one, fixture, two, loads, and three, material, all chosen. And we're ready to go to the next step. Do you have a question? No. I answered it. Fantastic. Uh, what was your question? Um, I was trying to read the number that was on there, and I'm pretty sure that's 140, right? Right. Yep. Okay. In the tree, it gives you a summary of, uh, without having to go into it and editing the force, how much, what the magnitude of the force is. Uh, 
Um, so it's a nice flexible way to work, uh, to see the forces laid out. Cool. So we just reached a checkpoint. Do you have any other questions? Cool. Um, we are ready to hit the run simulation button. So go ahead and hit the next or hit step four. Um, and uh, let's get to step four. And uh, this is the most fun part where you just get to click run simulation. That's all you have to do. And it's going to compute a whole bunch of stuff and going to show us a very extreme version of how this is going to fail. And so you can see here, it's kind of doing a dance for us. Um, with this 140 pound load, it might not bend this much, um, but what it is going to do is this is going to be the general path of uh, how it's going to deform. Uh, this is good, but we can get in a, uh, into better results. What it's asking us right here is, is this extreme deformation, is this is this uh, deforming the way you would expect it to in an actual application? Um, and in the case that it does, and you're happy with how, how this is being calculated, uh, we can hit yes, continue. And this is a really cool graphic. What this is showing us, the blue is places where the part is not failing. Um, and the red is the places where it is failing. And what it means by, what I mean by failing is um, you, uh, plastic deformation. So when materials are uh, failing, there are, like, there are three stages, uh, up, you know, simplified, there are three stages where first is like a rubber band, uh, elastic deformation, where it's going to stretch, it's going to stretch, and if you let go, it's going to come right back. Um, what's happening on the, uh, on the atomic level is the bonds that are holding those uh, that, uh, atoms together, they're just stretching. They're just stretching, and they come right back like rubber bands. Uh, when you get into the plastic deformation, you stress it so much, the atoms are actually jumping between each other. And so they start over here, and you stretch, and you stretch, and they hop over, and they make new friends. Um, and what's happening is uh, that when you relieve the pressure, it does not go back to its original state. It has deformed plastically. It's like... Um, it's like bending a piece of plastic, and when you let go, it just stays in a very sad little arc. You know, uh, it tends to happen. Uh, and then the last stage, of course, is when it breaks apart into two pieces. Um, anything that we, of course, what we're trying to design for is get rid of all of this red, get rid of all of the plastic deformation where it'll bend uh, permanently. Uh, we're trying not to have that happen. So we can see here there are a couple of areas where we need to refine our design. A couple of areas where it's red. An ideal world is we will not see any red at all. So um, let's, uh, there's a cool feature that I only recently, oh yeah, there's a, a more cool features that we can learn about where we have different, um, uh, okay yeah, so this is a factor of safety of one, meaning this is exactly 140 pounds applied. This is what it looks like. Um, a factor of safety means that, uh, say that our the actual applied force in reality beyond the simulation is going to be like 110 pounds, um, or I'm sorry, 150 pounds. This factor of safety is like a percentage, where you can, or it's like a multiplier of the force. Um, currently, where it's a factor of safety of one, where it's only going to be applying 140 times one pounds, or 140 pounds, exactly one times the amount of stress we define. Uh, we can increase this to a factor of safety of two. We're applying, simulating an application of twice the amount of, um, of, of force. And so it goes from 140 pounds to uh, 280 pounds. And that's what that factor of safety is. You can change it to uh, any decimal value that you would like. Um, and uh, that factor of safety is really great for visualizing exactly uh, if, it, if a part were to fail, where would it fail, and where would it fail first? Uh, for this one, it's pretty easy. What was really great about this, too, is there's this little text blurb down here. Uh, I can't read it because it's pixelized. Uh, can you read Based it? Based on the specified parameters, the lowest factor of safety found in your design is 0 0.098. Cool. So, uh, translated into human speak, that's um, if you type in this number that it gives you, 0 0.098, looks like 7915. If you type that number in exactly, that is the point when it's, your part starts to fail. Um, that is the factor of safety when it starts to fail. 
So uh, if you multiply 0 0.098, which is almost 0 0.01, uh, on your 140 pound part, you'll see that uh, um, it only takes about, um, what is that? It's just about 1.4 pounds, right? 1.4 pounds before your part starts to bend and fail. So we realize that there's something we need to we need to modify our part a little bit to make it a little bit heavier, a little bit uh, stronger to support our robot weight. Um, uh, we'll do that in just a second. But notice where it starts failing here. It starts failing here in the corner, um, and at this really sharp corner. It's even uh, failing here at the very very crack here. I think you can see that. Maybe that's just rendering, but definitely. Uh, definitely there. It's starting to fail on the corners. And this is a really good illustration of why we use fillets. Um, all the forces are being, uh, kind of think about it, of water coming up the, the you know, water is coming up from the, where the forces are applied and it has to rush to the place where it's fixed, which is way down here. And it's um, coming across this really sharp corner and it's tearing part of that corner. And it's, um, it's, it's not a graceful transition at all. Adding a fillet, uh, we'll see here. Let's go ahead and uh, take note of this number, 0 0.098. Um, and we're going to add a fillet, and then we'll see how much stronger our part gets. So 0 0.098 is where it was before. Um, let's go ahead and exit this, uh, this simulation by hitting this X button on the top. And it's going to ask us if we want to save, um, which means we're going to save our, uh, our load fixtures and loads. And, I think it's a good idea to save it so we don't have to add those. Yeah. Yeah, it's still uh, I do not believe you can. Uh, besides, we have to recalculate the entire thing, um, the entire uh, process. We have to, I'm sorry, we have to recalculate. Yeah, we have to recalculate it uh, with the new geometry. But first, I think we have to fill it. Okay. Um, is the factor of safety still the same? Because I think I think you're going to have to recalculate it. Um, well, I think what Robert just said is that we ha we can uh, we don't have to exit out of there. Um, that's my that's my habit. So, uh, if you're learning for the first time, you don't have to exit out. But we're going to go up to the features tab, uh, and we're going to add a fillet. So go ahead over there, and we're going to add a fillet here. The fillet tool is in the, about the center of all those buttons, and that's going to be um, putting a radius in any of the edges. So um, this edge here is where it was failing before. We saw that, that little red splotch. Uh, and if we click on this in internal edge, click on this internal edge that just runs this length, the depth of the part, uh, it will add in, it'll smooth out that edge by adding a radius to it. Um, default radius that pops in there is 0 0.1. Let's just increase that to one inch and make it a really nice big, big radius. Oh, goodness. There we go. Uh, there we go. One inch. So now you can zoom out and we can see that's a really nice big radius. With our uh, two inch diameter uh, hole that we're holding onto, it'll be very snug against it. And we just radius both sides just for good measure. And we'll go ahead and apply it. Very good. So now this is what our part looks like. We have a nice radius in there. Um, and what we're going to find is hopefully the factor of safety uh, will increase, where it's going to be much safer. It's going to be able to take a lot more loads. So uh, if you close down a bit, like I had instructed you to, uh, you can reopen it by going to this uh, Evaluate tab in the Simulation Exp Analysis Express Wizard, um, and hit this Next button. Don't start over, because we have the fixtures and loads just the way we want to. Um, also, notice that. Uh, the, fit, the the load applied itself again here. The, the face is still the same face. It just shrunk uh, because the fillet was taking up this space. And so it's not going to apply force on the fillet. It's just going to apply force in this more concentrated center here uh, where the face is taking up space currently. Um, with that, you can just skip all the way down to, uh, to uh, number four. Um, and make sure if you haven't closed out of this that you recalculate. We want to make sure that uh, and go. It'll go ahead and run the simulation. Make sure you run the simulation again. That way, it'll uh, make sure that you're getting the latest data. Uh, this is deforming the way we expect it to. Um, uh, before we hit next, is uh, do we have any questions on how we got here? Uh, already, has everyone seen 
stuff like this on their screen. Just thumbs up. Cool. Um, then, yeah, let's hit continue. Our old factor of safety was 0.09. Our new factor of safety is 0.14. So this actually, those fillets helped a heck of a lot. Um, it was getting close to being one and a half times as strong. Yeah, okay. so mine doesn't show that it is going to, like it doesn't show the uh, red and blue. It's just That's because yours is not failing yet. Um, Fluffy's part looks just blue, completely blue, and it's not failing yet. Um, so, can you tell me what the thickness of your material is? Is it this eighth of an inch? Mm -hmm. uh, interesting. How much of a ruler can you put on there? Uh, pounds or newtons? That's worse. Okay, well, there's something different in yours. That I think it's just not render, because it was showing. Well, your factor of safety is 1.6. Um, so Fluffy's factor of safety is 1.6. Um, we don't know why Fluffy's is different, but there must have been something different of uh, uh, the way we did something. Or we'll check our material. Just look at that event. <laughs> oh, I think my factor of safety might be a little higher if I said like that event. At least I'd hope. <laughs> um, very good. So we can see here that our factor of safety is still. Um, not very good. It's, uh, this aluminum material isn't holding up for us very well. Uh, yes, Fluffy? When I selected, because I accidentally uh, hit start over, uh -huh. um, and so when I reselected my material, instead of selecting aluminum alloy, I selected the steel alloy option. Uh -huh. I was not reading. So Fluffy selected steel instead of aluminum. So aluminum here at this point failed. Uh, the 6061 alloy aluminum failed. And you can hit this change material in step number three. But it'll go back to step three. And Fluffy, which one did you which one did you choose? Can you show um, us where you got just there? go to steel mm -hmm. and alloy. It just alloy steel, just yeah. down here at the bottom or middle of the bottom? Yep. Right there. So if we hit alloy steel, we go from aluminum, which is super light, uh, and uh, good great strength to weight ratio to steel, which is super strong, but fairly heavy and dense. Um, we'll see here that our new factor of safety went from being a pitiful 0.14 to being a really nice 1.6. So with a, a steel part, an eighth of an inch, eighth of an inch thick with these nice big radii, um, and this particular dimensions in the setup here, uh, we could pop this on a robot, and a robot would probably hang off of it. It would probably be really happy. In fact, we've got wiggle room. Uh, this is that this can handle 166 <laughs> percent of uh, of the load that we want to put on there, 1.66 times. So what we could do is uh, we could take weight out of it either by um, you know maybe decreasing this fillet radius, which will make the part weaker but lighter. Uh, but it's already strong enough, so we can take away some of that strength. We can also make the material thinner. Uh, we have a lot of different options of taking material away. Um, for instance, these um, these sharp corners on the outside probably aren't doing very much uh, structural uh, purpose. Those are just kind of dead weight that are sitting there, kind of like ears, just hanging out there. So uh, we can fillet those down because uh, we don't need them all. So if we add some more one-inch fillets, um, we can hit the check mark. Uh, and we'll notice here that we didn't close out of this, uh, this SOLIDWORKS Express window, just like Robert had before. Um, so we didn't close out of it, we just added a fillet. You'll notice that the fillet, if I can you click and drag this bottom bar, or this bar here, so we can see more of the tree. Is it working for you? Oh, there it goes, very good. You'll see here that we do have a second fillet, so it did apply to the 3D part. But the reason we're not seeing it is because this is a snapshot of the part as it was as it was calculated. So in order to see the newest data, we have to go back to step four, run, and we have to run the simulation over again. And so now you'll see those fillets are indeed there. Uh, and when we jump to section five results, we'll see that our factor of safety is still 1.66, but we took away material that just didn't matter. Um, so we saved this weight that was on the outside, um, and we didn't compromise our strength at all. And you made it safe. 
and we made it safer. That's exactly right. No, no stabbing, uh, stabbing walls as you run into things. Yeah. <laughs> so one thing to remember about the factor is say you don't want to drive it down with your form. Right. Because this is a static uh, factor of safety. Um, that doesn't assume that basically you're just loading it up to exactly what the robot is and you're right on the verge of that cherry thing. Mm -hmm. A typical factor of safety is a thick if you want to shoot for um, depending on how much impact and damage it's really going to be taken uh, would be like factor of safety between two and four. Mm -hmm. Right. That is a really good point. So just to summarize too, uh, I don't know if the microphone can pick where you are up, so I just kind of want to speak it aloud again. Um, this factor of safety that we have down here of 1.6 uh, is good. It's over one, which means that it'll it will handle a static load if we very carefully set 140 pounds on it. It would not fail. Um, but if you dropped 140 pounds on it and it has some momentum to it, or your robot um, has a spring and it really wails down on trying to, on, on climbing. Um, and the, the force of that, uh, that momentum ramming down into it is gonna increase the, um, or is gonna increase the, the force that we need to simulate for. And that's a great, uh, this factor of safety is a tool that helps you estimate that. Uh, if you increase your factor of safety to two to four, um, that is a, a typical good, good place, good factor of safety to have for those really rugged conditions. And you can modify that as you, for application purposes. So, Robert, you have a question? I'm sending the, the material. So how, how do you set the material apart? Okay, sure. Um, so there are two options when we have this window open. Uh, step three is material, and you can go to step three, uh, and you can hit this choose material. Um, on some machines that have come in, after that I've encountered, it doesn't open up this window. Um, there's some sort of glitch in the driver. Um, or something in that matter. Uh, so if this doesn't work for you, if clicking this link does not work for you, um, you can come over here into the tree and right click on this uh, this material section of those, uh, has an icon of three horizontal lines and some dots on the left, and you can hit this edit material button. I'm sending the link for like, I've gone all the way up to material, but I can't just actually make, I chose the material, but I can't make that material. Oh, okay, so applying it? Yeah, so if you go back into uh, I'm going to come over and take a look at what you've got on your screen. Cool. So you're hitting apply, and you're okay. So I think what needs to happen. Go ahead and close out of that window, uh, and it's just saying that it's not chosen yet. Okay. So what's happening with uh, Roberts is that. His step three material uh, doesn't recognize um, that the material has been updated. Yeah, when it's over there. I think that's because we're still in this. Uh, the run, if, if we exit this and save the data. Mm -hmm. yeah. Modify the material. I, I think what it does is that simulation allows you to change the material for the simulation. Without actually changing the material in the part. Uh -huh. yeah. I bet so, that's right. so you can experiment with different materials in the simulation once you decide on one that you want. Then you can come back out here and actually assign the part. Mm -hmm. That's a really good point. I bet I bet you're exactly right. The changing the simu the material in step three might only change it for simulation purposes only, not actual part. Well, might not save it with the part. The actual part. But isn't happening in the simulation. Maybe close out of the simulation and open it again. And maybe that'll uh, make things happier. It's kind of like rebooting your system. All right. Uh, no, that has the okay, very good. So if you had the problem that Robert was having where uh, simulation, or this, in the simulation window, it, in under step three, it wasn't showing you that a material was selected or the wrong material was selected, um, the solution that we just found was to close out of uh, the SOLIDWORKS Simulation Express, save your changes, it's all good, uh, and then re-enter it. And upon re-entry, it'll refresh and it'll find that you have the material that you're, um, that you're looking for. All right, cool. So with that, um, if you've changed anything, 
uh, as we were talking, go ahead and recalculate your material uh, or your simulation. But uh, for the so we're going to have to do that right now. So go ahead and, and run simulation. We're going to look at the results section again. So meet me at step five. It's deforming the way we want. That's very good. Um, we've got a factor of safety of 1.6. There's some. Uh, we'd want to increase that to two or four later, and we can do that by adding thickness. Um, there are some more uh, more results sections that we have. Right now, the default is showing us the factor of safety where it's going to fail. Um, and uh, this displacement area, uh, this displacement is showing us on a scale, this kind of color scale, how much is this part going to move um, from its natural uh, uh, position. So you remember when we were talking about the uh, elastic elastic deformation, how it'll bend and then it'll come snap right back. Um, this is showing us how much the part is going to bend. So anywhere on the scale that is um, that's red, uh, I can't quite make out what this three millimeters. Three millimeters it's going to bend uh, anything over here. This three millimeter section, this red section, is going to move about three millimeters from its default position. Um, but not to worry, because it's um, not uh, moving in this factor of safety, or because it's not permanently de deforming, once it's unloaded, it'll snap back to its original place. But when it's loaded, it will stretch to three millimeters apart. Um, um, with that, we have a question, Shelby. Um, do Should we change it to the alloy steel, or are we going to change it back to aluminum? Uh, yeah, we'll do, um, let's, uh, yeah, let's talk about that right now. So let's say that we have uh, the next chapter of our adventure here is let's get this to spec with um, uh, with the factor of safety that we want. Let's say we want a factor of safety of three uh, for this application. Uh, and we also have a goal of making this part as light as possible. Um, is the factor of safety up there 1.6? Uh, this 1.6 is the point uh, yeah, this is the maximum factor of safety where it's going to fail. At this point that it's listed, that's calculated for us, it's going to start failing at that specific point. How did it get so high? Uh, we, uh, we had it changed to steel rather than from aluminum. Before we had it at uh, 0.14, that's as good as we got it for aluminum. Um, and then as soon as we switched to steel with the same geometry, it updated, it made it significantly stronger at being a factor of safety of 1.6. What type of steel are we using? Uh, we were using alloy steel. There's a line item that says alloy steel. Very good. Um, so the next thing that we're going to tackle is uh, which material do we want to use? Um, if we're going to get a factor of safety of 3, uh, what material uh, is going to be lighter? Um, uh, we might have to have more the part might have to be bigger or thicker for aluminum, but since aluminum is lighter than steel, um, it might actually be less weight than a smaller steel part. Um, so this is where simulation really can come in handy, especially for doing really large, uh, large, complex things. There is this new feature that I never really looked at because I was so excited about this step five. There's a step six called optimize. Let's see if we can head in there, uh, and this is going to. Uh, what this is going to do, let's see, I can't, would you like to operate in your, in, I can't read that Would word. you like to optimize your model? Oh, okay. Um, let's give this a shot. I haven't messed around with this very much, so bear with me. Um, so what this is going to be doing is uh, it's showing us every single dimension that we've placed on our part. You can slide this window out of the way just for a second. Um, what we can do is we can say, hey, SolidWorks, here is every dimension we have in our in our model, um, we can give it free reign on changing the thickness of the material, saying make it as thick as you want um, so that our um, our factor of safety for our aluminum is at three. Um, and what that'll do is it'll find the magic thickness that will make our factor of, uh, factor of safety three, uh, and it'll optimize it. You can add more than one dimension, you can say, uh, you know, feel free to change this half inch up here. Feel free to change this half inch over here, or this one inch radius. Uh, uh, so, you know, yeah. factor of safety one. Sorry, at least change the factor of safety one. 
Uh, let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at these param this parameters window. Um, I'm pretty sure that you can fill in what factor of safety you want. You can show it. Yeah, there we go. Um, all the dimensions. You've got category, value, units, uh, comment, and then a link section. Um, we also can you slide this window over so we can see what's down here. You can see this is a variable view and a results view. Um, so let's. Um, like I said, I haven't worked with this very much, so uh, this is uh, still new to me a little bit too. But we're going to do this together. We're going to figure it out. So it looks like it only allowed me to select one dimension. Only one dimension. Yeah, the, the one here, and it changed this. Okay. If you um, close this, no, I don't even know if you have to close it. If you go down to uh, variables down below, like that, <laughs> it gave me a second variable to plug in. Did you actually set a barrel? Oh, no, I did. Oh, very good. So, so I'll take this. Hit OK. And uh, now it shows up down so here as a variable. Cool. So this entire window only handles one variable at a time. Yeah. And then when you hit OK, it will bring it Oh. I don't actually start so down here. Click here to add variables. Huh. Oh, you've got multiple variables in there now. Maybe it's only showing you the first one. I don't even need the first one down there. Huh. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Okay, sure. Um, so we've added, let's see, in this case we have model dimension eighth of an inch, which is the thickness, and model dimension half of an inch, which is this top bar thick, uh, this top bar width. I think we got those on the three. Oh, sure, sure. Um, so what we did uh, is we clicked on the dimension that was inside this view, fin this view window. We just clicked on it while this parameters window is open, and it filled it right in. If you wanted multiple, um, you would apply the first one. You hit OK or Apply. And then down here in this variable section on the very bottom bar that it opened up for you, uh, you can click to add a variable. And you can add multiple. You can tell it to uh, uh, change multiple dimensions and optimize multiple dimensions. Uh, a feature of this, too, is that you can set uh, a minimum and a maximum thickness uh, of these, or, or minimum and maximum values. So you can say, um, how do you add a variable? Down here, if you look up here on the screen, Robert, right here. Just click to add a variable. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Your window is already up, so when you click it, it opens up this window. This window and this window is there for you to add a variable though. And so you click it once, it opens up the window, and that window allows you to add a new variable. And you can click uh, in this viewfinder the, uh, what dimension that variable is going to be changing. And then once you select the one, you hit apply or OK, and it'll be fantastic and you'll be ready to go. Um, under this variable section, we have uh, you can change maximum, minimum uh, thickness or value. So you can say um, the thickness is not to exceed two inches. <laughs> That's a little excessive, but you can you can tell it not to look any farther than two inches. Um, we probably don't need to look any farther than a half inch, so we can just change this maximum value to a half. But this this is the half inch dimension. Is what's showing up. Is it really okay? Yeah, so this is going from a quarter to three quarters. Okay, good. Thank you for clarifying that. Yeah, I'm not quite sure. The thickness, I, I'm not. I, I'm not quite sure how to change that max. But we've got both in here. So. Okay. Um, maybe we can fill around with that more. Yeah, let's try to run this and see what it comes out. Okay. Um, there is one quick thing. If we can put our brains together about what this goal section is, I think that might be because there. I see that we can add a max. That are a mask setting. I think that's what that says. And then a maximize. Is there a way we can add some add some sort of section there? Is there a right clicking that you can do to add something? I have a question. Yeah. So my my SolidWorks actually crashed, and I'm having to rebuild the part real quick. What is the length of the shorter part? Uh, two and a half. Two and a half. Two and a half. Okay. Cool. Very good. Um, thank you. Uh, so yeah, I think I, I, I agree. We should just run the part, and we'll see what we get. So hit the next button, and we'll see. It'll it should be second to find the range for a dimension. Oh, I see. 
<laughs> the reason, okay. This next button let us edit this. This section, this second, uh, right, uh, this range area. So it's kind of progressing us through this bottom section. Um, so oh. now, hmm? yeah, so we can add our maximum and minimum. So we've set a, uh, a min for our, our part here as a quarter inch, so it can be as thin as a quarter, uh, and maximum value of a three quarters of an inch at the part of the year. Okay, so that extra thing I think is uh, a, a space for a new variable. So this is one variable that you created already. And so click in this empty box. And do you want another variable or are you set one? Okay, then just ignore it. Pretend it doesn't exist and you should be able to. Oh, hit cancel then. Okay, there you go. You I'm not sure if they actually tell. Would you mind if I go around? Okay. Um, going to click to add a new variable. Looks like you've got a variable already. What's this thing? Okay. Okay, so I just deleted all of your variables. I'm going to just try this one more time. To add that variable. Okay, smash on that. So let's see, select the function. I do not know. This has always been a little finicky for me too, so I'm, I'm sorry I can't figure out what that is. Um, So how do we change the thickness? So the way I did that is I edited the dimension and I right clicked on the on half inch one and mm -hmm. allowed me to delete it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then once I it asked me and I said okay, <clears throat> then I was able to go in and pick a new dimension this one that I wanted and hit okay and then that popped up as a thickness. Okay, so it looks like you can only have, have one variable at a time? That's what it looks like. Okay, so it looks like we only have one variable at a time, and we can. Uh, so we'll just pull forward. We'll pull work with that. So we're going to modify the, the thickness here in this specific case. Um, so in which case, let's keep going. Hit the next button. Uh, so I think define the range of dimension. We've defined the range of dimension already, so we can hit the hit the next button. We've got everywhere from uh, a sixteenth of an inch to. 316 of an inch. So that's that's good. Pump it up to a quarter, maybe. So I'm doing quarter inch. Very cool. So that's the maximum minimum thickness. It'll be either paper thin or not paper thin, but 16th of an inch, very flimsy, or very stocky in a quarter inch. So we can get next. And now it's saying specify a constraint for the optimization study. So now here, yep. add constraint. And so a constraint we'll want uh, specifically is factor of safety, because we're looking for a minimum factor of safety to be three. Uh, so our factor of safety must be greater than three in order for our optimization to be successful. So we're following the prompts over here. Over here, we, uh, we were able to change that factor of safety in this gray text bar area down here. Um, are we able to follow along here? Um, I understand Robert's computer is being a little finicky, but um, Muffy and Steve? Mine is also being finicky. Yeah. I'm not getting a next. I'm really building the part. <laughs> I just have selected to mention them. I'm still on the uh, the variables. I ah, have selected to mention. All right, right. Okay, you have two mm -hmm. off the board. Right, I had, I, I deleted one. Delete that. Mm -hmm. I think this is what Robert's computer was going up to as well. Right. 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 
brings us back here. I wonder if we close out of the wizard and open it back up again, save our changes and come back. Maybe it's just... I did that too. We did. Man. Um, then I don't know. It's two computers that are acting very finicky. Um, so let's, so let's, let's finish it here yeah, yeah, on the screen so, real quick. So yep. the video, and then we'll end the class, and then we'll trigger this up. I agree. Like I like that. So I think we're real close. I think so as well. Um, so then what we've done, just for summarizing, is we've added a variable that uh, for which thing that we can change. We're adding constraint for, you can change that variable as much as you want. Uh, find a place where the factor of safety is going to be greater than three. And the next thing that we're going to have um, is adding, op, uh, adding goals, right? Run the just running the optimization. Cool. So now what it's going to do is it's going to tweak that one variable up and down until it finds the magic thickness that gets us to factor of safety of three. So it's going to process, it's going to think about it, it's going to think about it really hard, and it's going to spit out a nice spreadsheet for us. And it's also going to calculate the mass of what we have here too. Okay, looks like it's all done. And it's presented us this with this result tab, result view. So the initial factor of, or the initial settings that we had on here was an eighth of an inch thickness, uh, and it was at 1.6, which is what we're familiar with. And so it changed those that uh, one that eighth of an inch to what is this new number? 0.225. Cool. So it says that uh, we need to have a minimum thickness of almost a quarter of an inch in order to get. Um, uh, three factor of safety. Uh, what weight did that increase our part to? It took it from 0 0.08 kilograms to 0 0.15 kilograms. Cool, 0 0.15 kilograms. Um, so, you know, almost doubling the part weight, which is, you know, we're almost doubling its thickness. Um, and so now that we're at 0.15 kilograms, we can, uh, this is in steel. Yep, this is an alloy steel. Um, what we can then do with this is we can go back and we can, uh, we're going to save this same process. We're going to save all of this. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to run that same optimization again, noting this 0.15 kilograms of steel. And we'll see if it's heavier or lighter to use aluminum. Because the aluminum is going to need to be a lot thicker with these contours. So we'll save, we'll close out of this and we'll save it. Cool. And we're going to change the thickness to, uh, oh, sorry, change change the uh, aluminum and the steel to aluminum. So we'll just grab a 6061 alloy because that's what we're that's what we're working with here. Very good. Apply it, and we'll close out of that window. And now we're ready to re-enter the simulation express analysis wizard, and we'll uh, we'll run the optimization again. So Robert. Computer just says to me, says that the optimal length is 0.25 inches, and the factor of safety then is one over three. What is uh, what is it about three? It's about 0.23 about three. Okay. Yeah. 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 I think uh, I think what happened was it didn't run a very detailed analysis of exactly the. Um, factor of safety that you absolutely need. Um, so uh, what had happened on Robert's machine, and perhaps our machine as well, is that it ran um, a factor of safety analysis and it increased the thickness by a couple of increments. And it overshot the goal. And as soon as it overshot the goal, it just told us and said, we overshot the goal at this thickness. And it overshot by 0.33. So it wasn't the exact number that we were looking at, but it's bigger than that number. And that gives us a uh, context of where the, the number we're truly looking for is. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. I don't know. I, I put mine, so factor of safety mm -hmm. had to be at least three. Yeah. And uh, it optimized to a factor of safety of 21.09. Oh. <laughs> well, that's that's at least three. That's almost, that's at least three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So just to finish this up. Yeah. Um, well, we're going to keep going up here and then we'll talk, we'll figure out what's happening down here. So I've changed the material. 
I rerun the simulation. Mm -hmm. And it gave us a factor, minimum factor of safety of 0.22. So it was right? mm -hmm. When it optimized. We, we changed the material from steel to a little bit. To a little yeah. 60, 60. Right. And at an eighth of an inch thickness or a quarter inch thickness, it was failing at. Um, um, we were, we were at steel, it updated it automatically to the 0.22 thickness. So I left it at right. that thickness. Gotcha. So, so that's why this says 0.23. Right. Um, I came down here and I wanted to optimize. Mm -hmm. And the dimension range is from one sixteenth of an inch up to one inch. Mm -hmm. and, and I move on to hit next. And logically, the aluminum is going to need to be a lot thicker than the steel because it's just naturally uh, a lot. So um, the factor of safety is still at three. Mm -hmm. We still want it to be as strong in the end, it just maybe a different thickness. And run the optimization and see what it does. Cool. This is going to spit out a magic number for the thickness of the aluminum and the weight of the aluminum that it needs to be at. Um, and we're trying to beat 0.15 kilograms. That is how heavy it's going to be if we go with steel. It's running all the simulation. It's taking five, five <laughs> scenario passes. Um, it's only calculating five, uh, five of them. And it should be presenting us with optimal values, but currently our optimal value is left blank. Um, so maybe hit next. If not, we'll try running it again. <laughs> we crashed it's Oh no! Oh. It should be all the hammer. I did that to works twice today. <laughs> oh no. So the only thing that I can think of Mm -hmm. is that it took it to one inch thick and it still did not knock that factor safety through that might be what's going on. That is a really, yeah, that's a great scenario. That, that might be exactly what's happening. So if it ends up being, yeah, there's no, yeah, that's, that's probably right. There's probably no optimal dimension from the, uh, from the scenarios that we've given it for the aluminum to actually survive. So, so what it actually did, it looks like here, um, it did put it under optimal, put it under initial. Mm -hmm. So it changed the initial to 0.53 or half inch of uh -huh. Factor of safety of 0.6 and mass of 0.12. Right. So maybe if we go back to the variable view tab, we can change our uh, max thickness from one inches to two. And we'll try running the optimization again. And maybe if it's greater than one, uh, and less than two, it'll tell us exactly, or give us a ballpark of uh, the thickness that it wants to be at. So it's almost done processing all those scenarios. A little bit thicker. Tiny bit thicker. <laughs> Keep in mind, this is just one variable, one dimension. Right. We can play with these half inch radii. Yeah, the thickness might not even be the problem for where it's failing at this point. It might be failing, uh, you know, at this, this height section up here. That might be where it's failing. And we're just giving it the wrong tools to change. Yeah, uh, looks like this still isn't getting it where it needs to be. In fact, we can find out, we can find that out for sure if we finish the simulation. Uh, and we hit the back button, I think, uh, so we can go back to our I keep going back until we can go back up here to looks like those are grayed out still. Maybe we have to close out of Simulation Express. Right, so we obviously don't have this complete master depth of the optimized. Yes. But, <laughs> but but with the actual analysis that that's very clear on what we do. Yes. That's right. We might not include this analysis portion <laughs> in the video. Uh, it might be a little bit confusing. Yeah, we've got that one spread it up here. Yeah. Let's right, spend some time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so sorry about that. Uh, is there any uh, questions? Just going to open it up of where we were uh, with the kind of ignoring anything that happened with the optimized section. Um, so that's all about the park simulation. We had talked about before um, 
Steve had brought up the, uh, the question about um, instead of this entire surface being uh, having a force applied to the entire surface, is there a way that we can apply uh, a force to a smaller section of the surface? And I think the best way to do that is going to be um, adding another extrusion that will create a new face for that uh, create a new face for that uh, force that we're going to add. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll save our set, save our uh, setup over here for the simulation, so we can come back to it. Um, and let's change the thickness back down to uh, something more tolerable. Um, and we'll go back to steel where we know it worked. Uh, let's go to that quarter inch steel um, because that worked really well. Very good. So we're just going to find steel alloy in this drop down menu. And there we are. So we've run simulations and we found that quarter inch steel at uh, a quarter inch, I'm sorry, quarter inch steel at, oh, that's all I need to say. <laughs> Gave us a factor of safety of three. Yep, we found that uh, quarter inch steel gives us a factor of safety of three. And uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to add a face here that will hone in exactly where we're going to focus all of that, uh, all, all of that force. Um, so instead of just uh, broadening the force out across this entire face, we're going to create a new sketch on this face um, that's going, and we're going to extrude a small portion to place that force. So let's grab a, a new sketch and we'll pop it on this face and we probably only need uh, a box. So we'll just drag and drop, uh, we'll click and drag a box uh, relatively small. There we go. Very good. Um, I have gotten into the habit of um, moving this box all the way to the edges of the material. Um, that way there are less um, uh, there are less edges for it to fail at uh, accidentally. Um, and with this we can drag it approximately where we need to be. It doesn't need to be an exact science. Um, and size it either with the smart dimension or if I'm clicking and dragging it. Um, uh, how wide that force is going to be applied, uh, applied across. Um, Looks like, there you go, yeah. So in this case, let's just say that it's going to be applied across uh, 3 sixteenths of an inch. So that's 0.1875. And then we'll uh, drag that approximately centered, and I think that's really good. We'll keep it there. Um, I don't think we need to define it exactly. But what we've done here is we've got our box, and let's extrude this box, go into our features tab, and we're just going to extrude it. And rotate the view a little bit for me, if you would. There we go. So right now, this is super thick. Um, let's shallow this up so it's very thin, low profile. Um, currently, we've got 0.025 inches, and that's really low profile. You could go even smaller if you want, 0.001 or something. Because um, all that matters, the reason we're doing this is that this is going to create a new rectangular face that we can place our, uh, our, our focused force. So when we add it, it joins our part, and it's a rather insignificant sliver that it, we've added to our part. That's purely for simulation purposes. So with that, let's uh, go, now that we've added it and we're ready to um, do our new and improved analysis, let's go into our Evaluate tab and our simulation tool. And we're going to continue with our existing uh, existing setup because everything is exactly the way we want it to be except for the loads. We'll notice that in the loads, um, when we edit an existing force or pressure, click this, uh, or yeah, we can either click that or we can come over here and right click on the force and hit the edit definition button. We'll find that it shows uh, this face because this is a remnant of the uh, face that we had before. We don't want to use this face anymore, so go ahead and uh, deselect it. And instead, we want to add, uh, use this face that we just created, the special face that's uh, only here because it, uh, it's 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 there for uh, where we can focus our force. Uh, with that, that's the only place we want to have a force, and you can see here that it's it is focused here at this smaller center point. 
Uh, with that, we can hit the run button and skip to step four. Because our material is still defined at being uh, aluminum. Actually, we might want to change that to steel. So let's go ahead and change this material. Is that funny? Updating sometimes and sometimes not. Yeah. Double check. Always double check. Uh, and then we can jump over to run. And it's going to process this. It's going to say, uh, is this deforming the way you want to? And it looks like it is. So we're going to continue. And our factor of safety is 3.34 inches, uh, even when the force is being concentrated here at the center, not evenly distributed across this entire thing. We've got uh, a round bar that we're hanging onto. There's only a small portion of that round bar that's actually going to contact this part. So that 3.34 really helps us out um, because uh, it's going to be able to take 3.34 times 140 pounds of force um, at a time. Uh, and the reason that that extra force is important is when you're really slamming in and you're cranking yourself up really high or really fast, um, it, uh, that dynamic force really kind of increases. Um, uh, if you think about laying the static force exam. So it's almost like you're adding, adding more force. Uh, material are you using? Uh, we found that steel, alloy steel, works really well. And you can see here, and the uh, we bought one, went into the von Mises stress. I don't think I'm pronouncing that right. Von some very uh, fancy French man. Um, what this is showing us is uh, the yield strength of our of our material. Um, and so our yield strength. Six. 6.2 times 10 to the 8th. 6.2 times 10 to the 8th? Okay. It's Newton's square magnitude. So okay, cool. Strange. And what's the top number up here? It's 1.5 times 10 to the 8th. Okay, uh, versus 6. Point. So our uh, our scale here, um, this, this red, despite being red, it's actually just fine. Our yield strength is... Um, is way off the charts. It's way up here through the ceiling um, because this is at you know 1.8 uh, and 6. Point on however much is way up top. So it's 3.3 3 factor safety 3.35. That's exactly right. Um, so despite the the funny colors, it's just showing us relatively that uh, eventually when this does start to fail, um, it's gonna it's gonna start. To break here at this red point. It's, it's not breaking. Point. Yeah, it's not breaking, but when it does, it's going to start going there. How'd you guys do here? Yeah, sorry about that. I'll get back up here. I'm surprised that you built it all the way back down. Oh, where'd you go? Twice. Twice? Twice, because it crashed again. Oh, sorry. Well, is that right over <laughs> yeah, how's it how's it going over here, Steve? I'm still trying to get the uh, the optimized to work. Yeah, Actually, I, I did get the optimized to work again. It still jumped to that like insane 21, but it, okay. it, I got the optimized to work without crash. Good, was that's an achievement in and of itself. Yeah, yeah, because it um, crashed twice and then it was good. Yeah, you know, I used the optimize once. Uh, and I actually used Optimize for um, our latest robot for the thickness of our uh, our arm axle for 2015. Um, I have tried to figure out if it should 16. be steel or aluminum. Uh, 2016, sorry. Uh, I tried to figure out if it, was, if it should be steel or aluminum. And with the calculations that I, I ran, I found that um, that steel was overkill and aluminum would be just fine. Um, and I kind of want to throw this out here. There's a really cool, um, we were talking about the uh, dynamic forces being a lot higher than the static forces. Uh, if you've got a 120 pound robot and if you're, um, you're dropping it on the floor, you're gonna, there's gonna be a perceived force of a lot more than that 120 pound robot. Um, so you can actually calculate what that kind of perceived force is over here. We've got this uh, website open. Um, we will link to it in the description. Um, but what you can do is you can just Google search uh, forces in car crashes. Uh, and it should bring up this website, uh, hyperphysics.org. Uh, 
phy-asdr.gsu.edu um, hyperphysics. And what this is doing is it's going to, um, this is as if uh, we're you know, colliding with something that's not going to move very much. A uh, moving car hitting into some uh, stationary object. And if you slide, it shows all the formulas that it's going to be working with. You might encounter this in physics class and you can keep going. Um, down here at the bottom, this is what's really interesting, where you can type in your specifications. Um, the weight of the moving object, uh, for instance, an opposing robot that's going to ram into you um, as being 150 pounds, uh, it'll convert that uh, weight to mass and show it to you in a whole bunch of different, uh, in both uh, metric and English, uh, kilograms and slugs. Uh, also, fun fact, slug is the official unit of mass in the English system. Uh, and then you, how fast is this moving, uh, this robot that's about to hit you, how fast is it going? In high speed, a lot of robots tend to run at uh, 10, uh, what is, wait, hold on, did I have that right? Oh, 2.77 meters per second, okay. Um, 10 kilometers per hour. <laughs> but so, say it was, uh, uh, running at three meters per second, which is really slow for a uh, low speed. So I think six. Uh, let's oh, try. It's, it's, it's still pretty good. It's okay. Six miles. It's a good. It's a good clocking speed. So say a robot hit you at three meters per second. Um, oh, I was thinking feet per second. In which case, that, that's completely fine. Yeah. That's 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 completely <laughs> that's fine. Yeah. Fast. That's that is fast. Um, then it converts it there, and then the last thing it's going to ask you is um, how how much is uh, the collision when when the two robots are colliding? Uh, how much give is are the robots going to have together? Um, maybe the robot that hits you, or, or when it when it hits you, you kind of back up and you slide back, um, you know, a whole foot, or you slide back only a tenth of a foot. In this case, if we only slid back a tenth of a foot. So we're very stable, maybe we're up against a wall. Or you deform a tenth of an inch. Um, but it could also relate to your robot sliding back, sliding on the carpet. Um, so say yeah, you went uh, a quarter of a foot, uh, a couple of inches, it'll spit out a number of uh, the force, the impact force that you're going to get. That's the word I was looking for this entire time. The impact force, that kind of perceived force. Um, it's as if uh, you're holding on to 900 and three pounds. Uh, it's like you're receiving a blow of 903 pounds to the chest if that robot were to hit you. Um, that's the impact force. And you can plug that 903 pounds into your CAD simulation uh, if you've got a, a simulation set up for a robot that's about to hit you. Uh, and you want a certain part in your assembly not to fail. Um, and we used this exact website in 2016 for calculating uh, how big our arm needed to be. If we got whammed on the side of our robot, because we had an arm that cantilevered outside our robot frame, uh, how thick is our aluminum extrusion? How thick should that be in order to survive? Um, and our robot got hit in the side, and it survived. So it worked. <laughs> and uh, that's a very happy thing. We love physics, and we love simulation. Um, but definitely uh, be sure to give yourself factor of safety. Um, either in this calculation or in the SolidWorks environment. Make sure that you've got some, some, uh, some margin there to work with. This, um, even though physics can predict something really, really accurately, uh, it's the actual scenario doesn't play out as nice and clean and pretty as you would hope it would. Um, with that, I wanted to share that resource with you. It's a fantastic website. Uh, really like how it just calculates everything for you. Uh, any questions on that simulation topic? Uh, it's quite a bit to, to digest, but it can be a really powerful tool. And again, the only, only thing I'd like to add is that the best thing you could do is go and play with it, try to. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I actually, uh, all these SolidWorks uh, tools that are up here, um, the best way to learn them, yeah, exactly, is to just mess around with them, read the prompts that they give you, uh, and then Google it if you get stuck from there. They've got a whole uh, cool array of features from uh, uh, things like sensors, which I had uh, sensors that you can put in your model. 
where I can say um, that if the weight of your entire assembly exceeds, you know, um, 120 pounds or some other number that you want, it'll alert you and say, "Careful, you just breached, uh, you just breached your maximum weight, or um, this dimension that you defined uh, was breached," uh, and you can set that up as a sensor. So there are a whole bunch of cool things that you can learn about in SolidWorks. Fluffy. Okay, so I'd just like to say that not only can I CAD in milk, blood, red wine, white <laughs> wine, amber beer, dark beer, light beer, whiskey, <laughs> orange juice, motor oil, and gasoline. And that's just in the small little liquid tab. I would like to see this list. <laughs> I didn't know you could CAD in blood. Um, yeah, it was kind of frightening to figure out. You know, for that, for that, okay. Sure. Well, can you do flow analysis? Well, it's the uh, right. that's flow. So, in, that that is a good point. So, so that's you right. Had it in water, and then the uh, like appearances. They have the preset appearances, and blood is one of the preset appearances, as well as milk and all that. For any, you know, is this skim or whole milk. It does not specify, <laughs> but um, it is milk with the lowercase m. So, so, um, what can you really expect from that? I don't know. Um, so, what we've just done up here on the uh, on the screen, uh, thank you for doing this, is we added a couple of bolt bolts. And instead of fixing this bottom edge here, which is what we were simulating before, uh, we popped these bolt holes in and we clicked on the inside of these holes because that's where it's, the part is actually going to be fixed. It's going to be fixed at these two bolt holes, for instance. Um, and so, we ran the simulation. And uh, we had a factor of safety of like 3.3 before, if I remember correctly. Um, and now we can see that our factor of safety actually went down when we added these specific two bolt bolts to 2.826. Uh, 2 uh, 2 so it went down fairly significantly because of the way we were attaching it. So it really goes to show, and you can see, uh, you got to be careful about what it's telling you here, because you can see here that it would be failing specifically inside this bolt wall. Um, well, not failing. That's the maximum stress. Oh, you're in the oh, you're in the map on Mises stress thing. Okay, um, my bad then. In which case, maximum stress is still way off the charts. So that's that's fine. Um, can you go to uh, just the regular show factor of safety uh, and then type in? This is what I thought you had done. Uh, type in two point nine or something. <laughs> something beyond this maximum factor of safety. And when you peek inside here, inside this hole, you'll see that it is failing up here in this edge of the circle. Um, so if it were to start deforming, it would start deforming there. Yeah. Or if you over the mode, instead of 150 pounds, you put 350 or 400, that's where the problem is. Exactly. So um, if that's a risk you're willing to take, uh, take that, you know, with the uh, um, you know, just be aware of it, or you can increase the thickness. You can likely uh, play around with all these other dimensions. Maybe the width of this beam here would help. Um, maybe the angle you place these uh, these these uh, two bolts. If you maybe you know dock them over a little bit closer over here, it might make the stresses um, uh, less significant. And uh, all these tools are here for to help you kind of decide uh, how you want to continue. Is your part going to sustain itself uh, in use? Um, that's very good. Thank you for doing that. I completely forgot. Okay. Want to run a simulation in blood? <laughs> <laughs> cool. So it's uh, about time for us to get all wrapped up here. Uh, any last questions? All right, very good. Um, I look, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, and I look forward to talking with you guys next week, Be learning more of these fantastic tools that SolidWorks has to offer. So I'll see you guys then. Oh, that's bright. <laughs>